Just as Cartesian plane, a complex plane has two coordinates as shown here. A complex number, let's take an example, normally will be written as z equals to a plus bi. Now here, as you know, a is the real part, right? So this is the real part. And that is the imaginary part of this complex number, right? So on a Cartesian plane, as shown here, we are going to represent the real and the imaginary parts along horizontal and vertical axis. So the real part will be shown along the horizontal x-axis and the imaginary part will be represented along the vertical axis, the center being at zero. Now let us take an example where let's say uh, the complex number is just a real part. Let's say if we have z equals to let's say 2. Now z equals to 2 really means a point which is along the x-axis and that should be z equals to 2. If there is a point which is let us say z equals to minus 3 then minus 3 will be represented on the other side and that becomes z equals to minus 3. So as you can see that the real parts are represented on the horizontal axis. On the other hand, if I have uh, a pure imaginary number and let's say we have z equals to 3i. Now i multiplied by 3, each unit is 1i, right? So 1, 2, 3. So this position here represent 3i. Correct? Let's take uh, another unit here, another point. So let's say we take a point which is z equals to minus 4i. So minus 4i will be represented 1, 2, 3, Four, and that becomes minus 4i. Is that clear to you? So that is how we can represent pure real and imaginary parts. Now, let's look into uh, the complex number which has both imaginary and the real parts. So let's say we'll not name this as z1. So if z1 is, let us say, 2 plus 3i, then, to represent 2 plus 3i, we can actually uh, look into a position which is 2 units to the right, which is 1, 2, and 3 units up, that means 1, 2, 3. So this position here will represent the complex number 2 plus 3i, right? So this number here will be 2 plus 3i. Correct. Let me label these now. So this is 2 for us. That is 1, 2, 3i. Correct. Here we have minus 3. This is minus 4. And that is 0. Perfect. Now, likewise, we could represent uh, any number of complex numbers on this plane. So if I have another complex number z2 as, let us say, minus 2 plus i that really means that minus 2 will be on this side and i right there so this point here will represent the complex number minus 2 plus i is that clear to you the complex number which has both real and negative real and imaginary parts as negative will be represented in which you can say coordinate 3 right uh, let's say if I have minus 3, minus 3i. So that means minus 3 and minus 3i will be a point here. So that becomes your point z3. Is that clear to you? Okay. So these are the ways in which you can represent a complex number on a plane. And this plane is called a complex plane. And the diagram shown is called Argand diagram. 
Correct. So we call this plane as a complex plane and representing these complex numbers, we also call this as an argent diagram. Let's move forward and see some interesting cases now. Now we are going to represent, we'll take up a complex number z and see what really happens when we take its negative or when we have its conjugate. So let's take one example. Let's say the complex number is z equals to, uh, let's say 2 plus 3i. So let me first uh, mark the point 2 plus 3i, which is 2 units to the right and 3 units up right. So that becomes the position of 2 plus 3i. And that's our complex plane, correct? So this is our complex plane. In which this is the imaginary axis and here we have the real axis. Is it okay? And that becomes O, the origin. Now if I have minus z, then minus z will actually be minus 2 minus 3i. Correct? So minus 2 minus 3i means we'll go 2 units to the left and 3 units down. So what do you notice here? It is rotation by 180 degrees, right? So this, you can interpret this as a rotation by 180 degrees. You can say that, correct? Or you can say a reflection about origin. Or you can also say it is reflection about origin. So in this way, you can interpret the complex number with its negative, right? Now let's talk about the conjugate. The conjugate of our complex number is 2 minus 3i, correct? 2 minus 3i means 2 and minus 3i, means it will be positioned here. So that's the point which we are talking about. Now this means it is reflected on the real axis, right? So the, the conjugate is basically a reflection on real axis. The horizontal real axis. Is that clear to you? Right. So that is how you can interpret the conjugate when represented on a complex plane. Now let us see how to represent the negative of our conjugate. So that means we are not talking about the complex number minus 2 plus 3i. Now minus 2 plus 3i will be minus 2 plus 3i will be positioned at this point. Now that is a reflection of the previous one about the origin as expected. Right? But if you compare with the original, then it is a reflection on the imaginary axis. Correct? So that is reflection. of the complex number on imaginary axis. Is that clear, right? So if you compare with the original, which is Z for us, in that case, minus Z conjugate is a reflection on the imaginary axis. Correct. So let me write the numbers as we move along. So we have minus z here, right? And that is the conjugate of our complex number. Now let's look into the position of iz. iz will be 2i. When you multiply by i, i square will be negative, so get minus 3. So basically, iz is minus 3, 2i. 
So minus 3, 2i will be where? So we have 1, 2, 3, and then 2i means going up, right? So that becomes the position of minus 3, 2i. Now, if you compare this position with the original, then it is rotation by 90 degrees, right? So this is rotation by 90 degrees. Correct. So this is I times Z. So if you compare with the original position, which is right here, right? And now, if I look into I times Z, which is here, we see that this is a rotation clockwise, counterclockwise. So we can write down counterclockwise rotation by 90 degrees. So whenever you multiply by I, we do see a counterclockwise rotation by 90 degrees as shown in this particular diagram. Perfect. Now let's see what is the position of minus IZ. Minus IZ will be minus 2I plus 3. And the position here will be minus 2I, which is minus 2I, and plus 3 means 1, 2, 3, so that is going to be the position. Let me mark this as minus i z. So as compared to the original position, it is clockwise rotation by 90 degrees, right? Perfect. So we are comparing with the original position all these. The next one here is I Z conjugate. So the conjugate was 2 minus 3i. If I multiply this by i, we get 2i plus 3i, right? So if I'm going to multiply this by i, i and i becomes minus 1, so we get plus 3. So i, 2i plus 3, the position will be, let's mark this position now, as 2i plus 3. So 3 on the real axis and 2 here. Right? So that becomes, so you basically see that as compared to the original it is swapping of x and y coordinates right so when you multiply so as compared to the original it is swapping of x and y coordinates right the last one here is iz conjugate this is also equal to negative of iz conjugate. You can figure this out and check, right? So which is equal to, I mean, we are doing conjugate of iz now. So iz is 2i minus 3 and its conjugate will be minus 3 minus 2i, correct? So minus 3 minus 2i will be minus 3 and minus 2i. So that will be the position of I Z conjugate. Is that clear to you? This was I Z, right? Conjugate, correct? So it is a reflection of I Z coordinate. So in this diagram, you can clearly see what really happens when we multiply the complex number by a negative number, by I, iota, the real, pure, imaginary part, and what happens when we consider their conjugates. So all the combinations, six of them, are shown here, and I hope you understand how they will be represented geometrically on a complex plane. I hope that makes sense. 
We'll take the rest of the video after a break. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.